same rotate device again. Oh, shit. That's all right. Hi, my name is Lorraine. I am the owner of Crafty Therapy by L. I'm just bringing it up on the computer so I can watch along. It's sideways still. We tried to fix it. Um, we'll take care of that. We'll, we'll try again another time, but I just want to get going on this wreath. Um, hopefully you'll still get a general idea of what I'm doing. Let's see. If you hop on, just say hi. Let me know that you're here. Today I am making an order for a welcome sunflower wreath. Um, I have this beautiful metal, metal sign. And before I start, I just want to go over some of my tools so that you know what I use. This is a 10 inch roll of deco mesh. And if you can see, it's tan with the white little snowballs in it or white little specks. I use this a lot. It's a really pretty um, base for my wreaths. I get this at Hobby Lobby. And of course, I use my self healing cutting mat. I have it on. Um, listed down below where I get it from. I got it from Amazon. And I have my Fisker's rotary cutter. Uh, very important to have a sharp way to cut your mesh, otherwise it's gonna fray. I used to cut it with just scissors and it frayed um, terribly. So um, definitely invest in a self-healing cutting mat and a good pair of, uh, of uh, rotary cutter. I have my Fisker scissors. I have, this is a jewelry punch. That's how I'm going to attach my metal sign. I punch holes in the corners. Some people use cable tie mounts. Um, they put, it's like a little sticker that you put on um, that electricians use and then they, um, but I don't know, I've had a, one or two fall off. So I'm confident when I, once I wire this onto my Wraith, it's not going anywhere. So that's what I choose to use. And I just use some, I believe this is 22 gauge. The tag's not, yeah, I think it is 22 gauge wire. And I have a nice sharp pair of my wire cutters. All right, so let's get started. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna get done of this wreath today, um, or at least this morning before we have to leave for a doctor's appointment, but I wanted to at least get started. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my rotary cutter and I'm gonna be cutting 20 inch cuts. And I'm gonna use up this whole roll. And you can see how fast it goes using my rotary cutter. It probably cuts down wreath making about half the time if I was using a pair of scissors to cut these. So definitely worth the investment. I'm gonna be using this whole roll. This is a 10 inch roll of deco mesh and it is 10 yards or 30 feet. You gotta watch if you're buying locally from your stores they started only offering 18 and 19 inch, about 19 feet, 18 or 19 feet on the rolls, um, which means you're not gonna have enough for a wreath. So now we're forced to buy two rolls in order to make one wreath. Sign of the times, I know, but keep that in mind when you're making your purchases. see some people on say hi let me know where you're coming from I am in on Long Island in New York you can probably tell from my voice dreary day here but that's okay so I have just a little bit left this um, this I'll probably just throw away sometimes if I end up with a little bit extra I do save them because they end up making nice curls for another wreath but that I'm just going to throw away so I make sure you close you don't want to keep it open because you will cut yourself if you go to pick it up make sure you close it I am using a 14 inch wired wreath frame 
and I've already put my pipe cleaners on it. I have another video on my YouTube channel that I did yesterday on how I apply my pipe cleaners. I prefer to make my own wreath frames so that I know that all of my ties are where I want them to be. Sometimes if you buy them with the ties already on, you get an odd number of ties and that messes up the final design once you're putting your ribbons on. So what I'm doing is I basically just have a little clip, a little chip clip, and I'm gonna be making curls and I'm applying one to each pipe cleaner. So what I'm doing is take a little block, something to hold it open. I come to the edge and I curl it in once or twice. Then I put my clip to hold it. I curl it in once or twice. And at this point, I'm going to be ruffling it right down the middle. Nice tiny little ruffles. I pinch the middle and now I'm going to add it to my pipe cleaner. I do the outside first. I like to go all the way around the frame on the outside first. That's just my preference. It doesn't really matter. I know people that do it the inside. I make my two curls. I clip it. Two, two curls and then I just ruffle it teeny tiny cruffles all the way down. Some people call, I believe this, the woodland ruffle or the cruffle method. I like this design because it makes a nice full wreath without using too many supplies. This 14 inch frame, by the time I'm done with it, it's gonna be a 24 inch wreath, which is a perfect size for your standard size door. This is gonna be a little bit of a deep wreath. So if you have a storm door or um, it, you need it to be thin or low profile, this isn't the technique that I would use for that. I do make those also. Oops, drop my clip. Those are um, a lot of times made to order. Curl, curl. This order is from my Etsy shop, Crafty Therapy by L. Etsy.com. You could take a look what I have available. I ship anywhere in the United States. I ship pretty much daily. This design is going to be a good one for summer and fall because it's going to have the sunflowers in it. It would make a great Mother's Day gift. Just pinching and going all the way around. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I might not be able to see them in the chat, but I will go back to them and answer any questions if I can. This is how I learned wreath making, watching videos, trying it out developing different techniques. Two curls, turn it around. Once you get into the swing of it, it really doesn't take long to do. This message, mesh, you're gonna hear the dogs barking. I'm sorry, I have two labs. They're outside right now and they're barking at the town that's working, redoing our sidewalks and our 
roads. This mesh I really like to use because sometimes um, I don't even put ribbons on. It's just a pretty mesh, a pretty year-round mesh. And pretty much goes along with anybody's decor. It's pretty for farmhouse signs. So I really like to use this. I use this in the winter and I also like to use it in the spring a lot. Like I said, you can find this at Hobby Lobby. Not all of their mesh I will use, but this is one of them that I do like. Obviously you wanna use quality materials, whether it's your ribbons, your wired ribbons or your mesh. Otherwise, uh, you know, you go through all of this work and if you're not using quality materials, it could end up being a hot mess with low quality materials. All right, so there we have it. We've got the whole outside done. And now we're gonna go ahead to the inside. I have a bunch of other YouTube videos that were pre-recorded and uploaded. So you can take a look. I've got one on how I cut my ribbon tails using my ribbon boards. Very easy to do rather than doing them one by one. I've got a video on how I make my wreath frames. Um, I've got another video on how I prepare my ribbons, how cutting the edges, dovetailing them we call it. Um, I will go over today on how I attach the signs. Sometimes signs are different, but as far as my metal signs, I prefer to punch holes in them and wire them on that way. I know that nothing is gonna fall off. Especially, I, have, I do send a lot of my wreaths, I ship a lot of my wreaths to the south, and I know their doors can get really hot. So, you know, there's no guarantee that that glue is not going to, me uh, to melt off. So for my own peace of mind, I really try not to glue any of my embellishments on. I try to either wire or zip tie when I can. Okay, we got two more, and then we're gonna move on to my sign. If you are a wreath maker, let me know. If you just like watching, that's okay too. I see we have some people on. I don't see any comments yet. Please let me know where you're coming from. I am from New York. You can tell from my voice. They say I have an accent. I don't hear it, but <laughs> I'm sure I do. All right, so here we go. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. I mean, you could just take it and add your sign and that would be pretty. But we are going to add some beautiful ribbons. I've got four different ribbons I'm gonna show you in a minute. So like I was saying for the sign, this is what I like to use. It's a jewelry punch. I forgot what the size, I wanna say, I'll put it in the link down below. I do have to look it up. It's been a couple of years, but I bought it from Michael's. Um, nothing fancy. I'm just going to the corners, punching a hole through. Easy peasy. You don't need a lot of strength. It goes right through. Now I'm gonna take some wire. 
I try to match up my wire to whatever sign I'm using as close as I can. I'm going to use my wire cutters. So this is about 12 inches. It's generally enough. This wire, I believe I got from Michaels. Obviously, let's see, that was one, two, that's four. Obviously, you want to use a good wire. You don't want to use anything that's too flimsy. So I'm just poking the wire through and giving it a twist. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I'm planning on going live at least once a week. This week I have my kids off. We're, they're off for spring break this week. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit harder, but once they go back to school, I plan on making like a set schedule of when I plan to go live. So I'm gonna take my wire and I'm shoving it right through the mesh and I have my hands on the other side and I'm feeling for a little pinch of the wires coming through. Okay. And I'm gonna tie it onto the frame in the back two or three times I'm twisting and I'm not pulling it tight. It's just sitting right on top of the mesh. I don't want it really, I don't want to really sink it down in and crush the mesh. So again, I'm pushing the two wires straight through the mesh and I'm grabbing it on the other side with my hands. Sometimes you just gotta play with it a little bit. So I did the opposite corners first and I'm tying it right on, right here. Right here, or the one up above. First or second ring is fine. I'm making sure that it's center. This can be a very frustrating um, part of wreath making is getting the sign on so that it's centered, it's not sinking down, fishing the wires through the mesh, but just takes a minute. So my Etsy shop has been busy with autism orders. Uh, April is Autism Awareness Month, so I've been sending out a lot of my autism wreaths and door hangers. I sent out a lot of Passover that's starting tonight, so happy Passover to anybody that celebrates. Um, I'm wrapping up on my Easter and spring, and I will be starting patriotic and summer designs. I have a few in my shop, but I'll be putting out more um, over the next week or two. All right, so there we go. It's on. What I'm going to do now is turn it over, check that I have it attached to at least one bar on the frame. As you can see, I don't want anything scratching my customer's door, so I'm trimming that and then turning that over. Okay. All right, so I have about five more minutes before we have to leave for our doctor's appointment. So what I've done is I have four ribbons. Generally, I like to work with four different ribbons on my wreaths. So I have a two and a half inch black and white check, a one and a half inch sunflower. These are all cut at 12 inches today, depending on my design. I cut anywhere between 10 inches and 14 inches. And here's another one, two and a half inches and one and a half inch. I only use wired ribbons. You learn that early on that if you don't use wired ribbons, they're gonna flop around on your wreath. So invest in good quality ribbon. So 
So what I did is I just tied it right in to the pipe cleaner and I'm spreading them out. I don't worry too much about spreading them out and fluffing them. That's something that I do in the final step. So I'm lining up my ribbons. I'm folding it over to find the middle and then I'm pinching it in the middle. And you can see I am making a V so that it's sticking out of the, they're, they're facing towards the out side of the wreath so that it's not gonna be blocking the sign that I have in the middle. Oops. And adding it two or three times. And you can see I'm alternating the pattern. Lining it up, folding it over, pinching the middle, smoothing it out with a little bit of a curve, and adding it to the pipe cleaner, twisting two or three times, and rotating all the way around the pattern. I teach local wreath classes here in New York on Long Island. I go to people's homes. Um, I have a group of ladies, um, someone owns a bar, so she gets a group of ladies um, every season together. And uh, I bring a new wreath design for them. I also offer them at my house when the weather is warming up, we do it in my backyard. So I'll be planning those very soon. Still not there yet, New York. We're still definitely in the 60s, 50s, 40s. So we'll get there. Okay. So basically, I've gone all the way around the wreath. And I'm going to do a second layer on the bottom, rotating. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish up the top so that you can see it. I don't need these pipe cleaners anymore, so I'm trimming them about a half an inch up from where I last twisted. You don't want to cut through your twist or else everything will fall off. So I'm trimming those down, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to fold it over and tuck it in the back. So those are all tucked away. And then I'm just gonna go around on the top, spread my ribbon so that it really fills out the wreath and that you can see the pattern on all of them. Why pay for ribbons if you can't see the pattern? So spread them out. And this is something I tell my customers when they get their delivery. You know, during delivery and shipping, they could be pretty rough. The postal and uh, UPS guys in their packaging and how they ha handle the package. So I send instructions on how to fluff out their wreath. I send them a link so that they can come to my YouTube channel and find simple little short videos on how to do that also if they want. Generally they're, they arrive in great condition but you know every once in a while we've got someone that's a little bit rough. Okay, so I'm gonna end that here. You can get a really good sense. Uh, the final design will have three beautiful sunflowers placed in also. I will um, go back and add the ribbons to the outside. And then this will be shipped to the customer this afternoon. Hopefully this helped you. If you have any questions, please um, drop them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer whatever questions I can. Hit the subscribe button so you can follow along. I will be doing more live videos and uploading other videos. Um, so I hope this helped you. Have a great afternoon. Bye.